Right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be available in our show archives um, later for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, so similar to your state library. Um, so we provide um, services and resources and training and grants to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find um, shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, uh, really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries, uh, something cool they're doing, um, something cool we think they could be doing, uh, do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos and services, all sorts of things. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes come on the show and do presentations for us about things that are happening here in Nebraska or through the Library Commission, but we also bring on guest speakers sometimes, and that's what we have um, with us today. We have a team <laughs> of um, guest presenters uh, joining us um, from Arizona, joining us very early, 8 a.m. Arizona for you all. Thank you so much for joining us <laughs> um, today. And um, they're going to talk about this um, great collaboration they're doing um, with um, getting a wonderful children's book um, uh, written. And I'm just going to hand over to you, I think, maybe Catherine, to start off to um, introduce yourself and tell us a little about what you did there. Awesome. Well, thanks, Krista. And we're really happy to be here with everybody this morning. Uh, my name is Catherine Siri Marco, and I am the fundraising and communications coordinator for Friends of the Verde River. Um, today, we're going to talk about our very first children's book and uh, what we've done with it. We're very proud of this work. Um, today, we have Grace Filson and the author Phoebe Fox on the line as well. So I'm going to hand it over to Grace. Oh, um, thank you guys so much. Um, and thank you, Krista, for having us today. Um, yeah, uh, Friends of the Verde River is a uh, nonprofit here in Arizona. We are the uh, local, for most local nonprofit that's here to help and protect a healthy and flowing Verde River, as well as making sure that we are recharging our watershed. Here in Arizona, that is very near and dear to our heart, is making sure we have plenty of water for generations to come. Um, and I will pass it off to Phoebe now, who is our actual author and um, really started this project from day one, more than um, Catherine and, and I were here. Um, so she can be, give a little more background knowledge on the book and how it was constructed. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to uh, help build awareness about this book and the Friends of the Verde River. Um, it sort of began with um, my family obtaining some property along the Verde River about five or six years ago and just spending a lot of time there and gave me a huge appreciation for the river, the wildlife, flora and fauna. It was just um, so different from what I experienced growing up in the city of Phoenix. And I wrote a children's book, which is in the form of a poem. And luckily enough, my mom just happened to be hosting a little get together in Phoenix to help build awareness of the Verde River and the Friends of the Verde River and how important it is to us. And she invited me to come with my husband. And I said, you know, I wrote this book about the Verde River. Would you like me to share it? And it didn't have any illustrations at the time, but I read it and it just sort of was the catalyst for this project. Um, I approached a few people there and said, what do you think about collaborating and having a children's book um, that was published by the Friends of the Verde River. And they liked that idea. So that's how it all began. And I was lucky enough to have an artist in the family. Uh, Jim Fox is my father-in-law and he is an amazing watercolorist. So he agreed to do the illustrations and we worked together. It was so fun going over to his house and laying out all the artwork and 
pasting and cutting our, you know, the text to make it just right. We knew for this picture of the heron that we had to have a double page spread. So we worked everything around that to make it fit into 32 pages. And that's that's pretty much how it came to be. It's just been, um, a wonderful way to, uh, to help the Friends of the Verde River and um, also wonderful for me to have an opportunity to have this children's book out in the world. Yeah, the artwork is gorgeous. Yes, I was I was seeing that when I, the video that we have that we'll show in a bit here. Um, it's just kind of um, I keep going to the to the pictures, to the animals, and everything on the, on the on the pages. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I'm not sure we mentioned, um, but this also was a um, a grant funded project. Um, we had a the Rose and Blue Foundation that felt the need to get um, a book to represent the Verde River um, to promote reading literacy and water stewardship out to the public. Um, so we could not have done that without them as well. Yes, we're very grateful to them. That was a huge gift that they provided so that we could have enough books also to donate to the libraries and schools. If you want to talk a little bit about that, Grace, I think that's so awesome. Uh, yeah, so we have um, the Verde River itself is over 180 miles long um, and the watershed is very expansive. So we have given out 500 books to um, schools uh, and libraries across the watershed itself. Um, yeah. I think we are ready for the next slide. Are we going to show the reading next? Oh, maybe that's what we're doing next. You want to do that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, you want to explain a little bit about what this, uh, what the video is all about here, how this came to be? Um, one of the fun things I do as an author is a story time Saturdays on YouTube. So I don't read every Saturday, but I try to get a children's book that I've read out to kids who might not get a story time otherwise. And so for this episode, I read On the Verde River and I was lucky enough to have a beautiful day right in front of the river with lots of birds chiming in and um, get to share that online and hopefully, uh, like I said, reach lots of kids who may not have heard the book otherwise. That's awesome that you do that, yeah. Um, all right, so I am going to show the video here from my screen. Get it up here, there we go. And Hi there, I'm children's author Katie Fox, and today I'm going to be reading to you my book, On the Verde River, and behind me is the Verde River. On the Verde River was illustrated by Jim Bugs. On the Verde River was generously underwritten by the Gerald Rosenblitz Family Fund, Phoenix, Arizona, for the children of Arizona. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, squirrels play in the path, skip, sniff. Spring down, rabbit hop on the ground. Dale, swoosh, drift, hush, hair and lands in the brush. The Verde River brush, where the sycamores grow, the sunflowers bloom, and the willow trees blow. Flap, flap, flip, flee, flicker, split on the tree. Quack, quack, flap, float, ducklings drift by the boat. Should we count the ducklings? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whip, weave, race, run, muskrats hide from the sun. The Verde River sun where the blackberries grow, the jupifers bloom, and the marigolds blow. You see somebody fishing? Twirl, twist, dip, dare, spiders spin in the air. Lift, load, thrust, tilt, beetles work in the silt. Rise, mount, hang, soar, eagles glide down the shore. The Verde River shore where the cottonwoods grow, the ash trees bloom, and the cat blow. Lots of cattails, just like behind me. Splish, splash, shine, gleam, waters swim in the stream. Swish, swish, chase, lead, tadpoles race in the reed. Sulk, chug, taste, bite, catfish, slurp. Through the night. The Verde River night where the darkness grows, the campfire blooms, and the soft smoke blows. 
looks like they're cooking s'mores. Leap, lunge, dash, pass, foxes romp in the grass. Howl, yowl, yelp, bark, sails calm in the dark. Can you howl like that? Whoosh, rush, walk, fly, owls swoop through the sky. The birdie river sky where the warm winds blow, the moon climbs high and the bright stars glow. Did you hear that red winged blackbird? I think he wants to join in the story time. This book can teach you all about the wildlife, the plants, the flowers in the Verde Valley. At the end it says, the Verde River is a magical river in Arizona that's important to people and animals. Some parts of the river are so special that Congress designates them as wild and scenic. That's why some friends got together to help protect the river and keep it healthy and flowing. They started a group called Friends of the Verde River. They need your help. You can learn more at verderiver.org. I hope you enjoyed listening to On the Verde River. I really had fun reading it to you. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. Hi there. That was awesome, of course. <laughs> uh, hang on here. All right. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that with us. Um, so everyone who was watching, um, I know when you're, we're going doing a video through um, online like this, sometimes it might be a little choppy or whatnot, um, or the sound. I mean, I had it turned up as loud as I could here, so hopefully everyone heard it okay. But we will have a link to this. You'll be able to watch it yourself as well. Um, whenever you want to, because um, as you said, Phoebe, you do these on your YouTube anyways. Um, so there's, it's just out there for anyone to watch who wants to. Um, so I'm going to make you presenter again, Catherine, so we can continue with your slides. Thank you. You should see that pop up. Perfect. This would be me. <laughs> Uh, so one of our things that we have is um, our Arizona Gives Day partnership with our uh, Verde Valley First Books chapter. So First Books um, is another nonprofit uh, that is uh, trying to uh, um, ensure that no child is left without reading materials at home. And um, now they were first founded in North Carolina, um, as they've grown to find out working with this organization. Uh, they really wanted to work with us, our chapter up here, to get our copy of the book to their kids. Um, we're both nonprofits, uh, so we had to figure out a way to actually um, to make that happen and also be a great way to fundraise as well. So um, it was our Arizona Gives Day campaign, um, and so they really wanted to get 1,200 books to the kids in the Verde Valley. Um, they do spring and fall readings, and so during each reading, they have they serve about um, 554 children. So that's pretty big. Um, so we're going to be in their rotation for several years. So that means that we're creating future water stewards and promoting our reading literacy for over 1,200 kids in the Verde Valley. Um, and so our goal currently is to raise $24,000. To help with this that's just the cover of the books um, and to actually getting it out to uh, the children over here um, and we actually have finished the first leg of this so we just gave out the first uh, 550 book or 525 books um, about a week ago and so they're hey, <laughs> off getting their it, it's a sticker with their name actually on the book as well um, and they have multiple volunteers that go through and read the book with them too. So that just came in here. And we are probably halfway to our goal right now at $12,000. Um, but we're very excited about that partnership and we love to be able to collaborate, collaboratively um, work with other nonprofits in the area and just promote uh, the work that we're doing and helping others and always serving to uh, strengthen our communities um, as well as our river. Um, yeah, First Book, we've worked with First Book here in Nebraska as well, actually. When you mentioned that, I was like, oh, we know, I know them. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we actually got a grant, I was just looking it up, it was back in uh, 
the end of 2019, um, we got a, um, a they, would, they had opened up, a, we applied for a grant from them to get grants. We got $28,000 to provide books to public libraries across the state. The libraries just then connected with um, First Book to then pick out which titles they wanted, like you said, from certain lists that they put together and all and all. And it was great. And we still promote that because it's a very great resource to go to um, just to get really um, discounted titles too for um, schools and libraries, any nonprofits that need books for, like I said, it's specifically for areas where there are people, children um, in that poverty level um, that are the ones most in need of this kind of thing. Um, wonderful organization, yeah. Yeah, we're They've really happy. Very... <laughs> They've been very sweet to work with, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get in here. I wouldn't be doing my job if I um, wouldn't mention, Grace did mention we're about halfway to our goal, so this is an ongoing campaign. If you go to our website, birdieriver.org, um, every $20 donated um, sends one book out to a kid, so we're we're hoping to, to make that goal. Nice. And how, when did you start this? Was this just, you said you just got your first batch of books. This is something just like recently that just started? Uh, the campaign day was in uh, ooh, February, right? Well, Arizona Gives Day is, um, I'd have to look up the date. It's, <laughs> we have so many things. I think it's um, in March. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, actually, you know, it is in April. It's the first week in April. <laughs> <laughs> already. Um, yeah. Um, just so it's been very, very short. Uh, so just in the last month or two. Yeah. It's amazing that you're already halfway through. That's great. Mm -hmm. How much you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're really excited about it. Is this m my slide? <laughs> I think it is. Um, well, so one of the beautiful things about the Friends of the Verde River giving a copy of the book to the libraries in the community is that I also get to go in and read the book at their story times. So we've done that a few times. And most recently, we got to, um, Jim actually came along to, you know, the illustrator, my father-in-law. And I read the story to the kids and he talked about what it's like to be an illustrator. We had lots of great questions from the kids. And then we actually took the Sunset Park Story Walk. So at Sunset Park, thanks to uh, Vivian Krause and the Sedona Library, you get to walk around the perimeter of the park and listen to a story. And we had an older child that was along with us. So he would read the text. And then underneath there's a suggestion of some activity or something you can do that goes with that illustration. So for example, when you get to the cottontail rabbits, can you hop like a bunny, you know, or can you flap your wings like a heron, that kind of thing. So it combines movement and reading and the love of the parks. It's just an incredible program. So I believe the book will be up there through the month of June and they what? ship it quarterly. Is that right, you guys, June, I think? And uh, Sedona is just yeah. a beautiful place to visit. So even though you're in Nebraska, most of you, if you get a chance to visit Sedona, you might want to go to Sunset Park. And you can take the story walk. Um, people going on vacation, yeah. Who knows who people might be going on vacation for the summer. That's yeah. a good direction. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, such a beautiful place. I was actually married there, so it has a special place in my heart. <laughs> Um, story walks are a great thing that libraries are doing now too. We've seen and uh, working with parks and and um, uh, any sort of outdoor spaces. We've given grants to quite a few, li a few libraries here in Nebraska to do their story walks. Um, and for so, if anyone's interested in them, you can find lots of information out there. Yeah, just take a book, and you can, I can see in one of those pictures, you can see the stand where the pages of the book. You can take an extra copy and put them in those. Um, frames um, and then you can change them out like you said regularly for seasonal um, those look like really nice you know some of them I seen are a little not as protected and enclosed as that one um, so sometimes you could, like year-round um, if you get something that's really nicely built like that and the bonus too is that when the story rock changes its story those um, illustrations are laminated so it becomes portable and we can take it along and set it up at events so that kids can go on a story walk with them. Oh, so that's they can, a great idea. Yeah. 
you know, the, uh, the Sedona Library Storybook Walk was created through their nonprofit, which is Friends of the Sedona Library. Um, so, and I know that they are working on trying to get a second location up so that we have the half mile nature walk around uh, the Sunset Park and they're looking for another place. Um, but all past, like Edie said, all past storybooks, um, they're very willing to give it and use it for the community for different events to, to make it portable and uh, have a, a, a nature walk wherever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, we've had some in Nebraska too. We work with our um, talking book and braille service and one of our libraries has added um, braille, um, like an additional piece onto that frame that for um, people who have low vision or blind can actually also read the story um, as they're doing the walk. Oh, that's incredible. We should mention too that the one in Arizona is bilingual. So you have not the story itself, but you have the activity or the suggested movement idea in Spanish as well. So just a great, great, great program. I love it. <laughs> Getting people outside and reading at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Um, great reads from great places. So. This was really exciting to hear that On the Birdie River was chosen to be on the list for 2024. And I should also mention that Melissa Savigny's Brave the Wild River is the adult fiction book that has been chosen for great reads from great places. And just forgive me for reading a little bit, but, but I wanna make sure that I get this right. Um, the Library of Congress Center for the Book has a mission of promoting books reading, libraries, and literacy, as well as their local literacy heritage. And most of you probably already know that. Um, but there are 56 affiliated centers for the book of the Library of Congress, and they choose a title. Um, I think this is the first year that they have a children's book and a fiction book from Arizona, but they will be recognized um, Saturday, August 24th at the National Book Festival in Washington, D.C. And at the festival, each of the states has a table where they can display the books and also just encourage people to learn about the literary heritage of the state. So I'm super excited that On the Free River will be there. And we've been putting together a bunch of different activities that can be passed out, um, coloring sheets and crossword puzzles and things like that to go along with the book. And the Friends of the Verde River are doing a bookmark. So that's exciting too. Are are any of you going to be able to travel to the book festival to be there as well? I don't think any of us are going, but we have our, our representative from Arizona, of course, our librarian. <laughs> yeah, we have staff that come um, from the Library Commission that that, that uh, handle our table there um, as well from for Nebraska. And I think I don't know if we I don't know if we ever have the authors come along as well. I guess it depends on what everyone is doing. <laughs> at that time, yeah. yeah. Did we have any questions? All right, so there's that link to that YouTube video that we were talking about. Um, yeah, if anyone does have any questions, I didn't mention this at the beginning, I should have, there is a question section in the GoToWebinar interface. Um, you can type in there any questions that you do um, that you may have. Um, we did have one that did come in um, uh, that uh, just the end here. But if anybody has any other questions, we got plenty of time here this morning. Um, we can ask any questions you want to about how they um, did this. Um, the book published, doing this with the um, friends of the, of the Verde River uh, group. Um, how you could do this in your own area. Um, but someone just want to know. Um, if, for the Friends um, of the River group, uh, you're talking about being a watershed and and, um, and you know maintaining it and whatnot. Um, has there were there problems with it? Like was it not being maintained, or was there something that you know had gone wrong that um, caught your attention that it needed um, supporting? Um, how did the Friends of the Verde River, um, you know, how's that initiated? I guess is uh, what they're asking. <laughs> Uh, so the history behind Friends is uh, it was a collaborative effort and it actually ended up being the conglomerate of uh, three organizations that melded into one. So it was the, oh no, I'm not going to know all of them. 
uh, the Verde River Greenway, and then Bergno, and one other one that I should know. I know Mike and Connie, our past board members, came in from there. <laughs> um, and really, what what happened was is that uh, we have a state park called um, Dead Horse State Ranch uh, State Park, um, and at the time there was a little bit of a surplus um, and at the uh, state of Arizona really wanted uh, the uh, lead ranger there to start a nonprofit, a local nonprofit to protect the Greenway specifically, which um, in our area, it's Arizona. We don't have a lot of greenery, but around the Verde River, it is very green. The repairing area houses a lot of endangered species. Um, so there was a need to initially just to protect that and to also, um, you know, just making sure that the ground flow of the river was continuing because that is also a concern. So that was really our basis there. And we were founded by um, several kayaking groups, um, actually, and just people who were out on the river and had a good time. And through that, um, in the last 10 years, we've really grown into a bigger organization where we've taken on more projects. Um, so we have gone from habitat restoration, um, which was just the invasive species removal of the, uh, the on the Verde River. Um, so plants that would really, really use up a lot of uh, water and kill off native species. Uh, we wanted to remove that. And through that, we've actually done quite a few um, clearings. Um, we actually have consistent uh, data to back that up now. Um, and we've moved on to recharging our watershed. So that's gonna be through our River Friendly Living Initiative, um, which is an opt-in program for homeowners, small, small businesses, farmers, and um, hopefully developers in the area that if they are river conscious or water conscious, um, that we kind of help them out and just give them a, an opt-in buy-in so they can say that, um, you know, whatever water they use, they have programs in place to offset that water use or to promote pollinator gardens or um, restrict the use of water. Um, so just to be pe get people mindful, we also through that give out to, for the homeowner and small business levels, um, small business grants. So we'll actually help give the community, if they write a proposal, um, we'll help fund them. I think homeowners get up to $1,000 small businesses get to $5,000 for different programs they want to use. Um, and that's becoming a more option program throughout the entire use of Arizona. Um, so kind of getting bigger doing that. And then the other half of that is our water stewardship and community outreach programs. And so that is through initiatives like on the Verde River, working with um, local authors like C.B. Fox and Jim Fox, who have just been wonderful to work with. Um, and then to raise the awareness, we do have a thing called the Watershed Report Card, um, which is a five-year study, and we base it on uh, water quality, quantity, um, land management, and community outreach there. Um, and we do update it every five years. We're actually going to update the 2025 Report Card, and we do a State of the Verde Watershed Conference, which is going to be coming up this September as well. Lots um, going <laughs> so a lot of a lot of going on. <laughs> um, we are a small team and a small river, but we're so important. Um, mm -hmm. oh, of course, Phoenix is uh, the fourth biggest city in our nation, and they don't really know that between the Verde River and the Salt River. That's forty percent of their drinking water. Um, so they care about this water, um, and we have stopped and had successful work in uh, stopping intermittent ground flow. Um, through programs of doing crop switching with local farmers and also getting them um, uh, just to go from flood irrigation systems to sprinkler or drip systems, uh, which saves the water um, a lot, especially in an area called Camp Verde. Uh, it would, the Verde River would not flow during the summer. Now it flows. So that's one thing that we've worked collaboratively with our local um, communities and we've actually made an impact, so, yeah. Right, thank you. Um, yeah. Another question came in, uh, specifically about the book. Um, 
you said that, uh, Phoebe, you had written this poem and then you worked with um, the Friends of the Ready River to publish the book. How did you get the book published? Um, you know, who did you work with to actually, you know, physically do that publishing of a book? <laughs> Um, well, once the grant was obtained from the Gerald Rosenbluth Foundation, um, we searched for various publishers, and it was important to have it printed in the United States. And we found Signature Publishing and Signature Printing, forgive me, and they were just wonderful to work with. So I don't have a graphic design background. <laughs> I'm more of a writer. So we sent the book to someone I'd worked with in the past for some other books, and um, Marie Stirk was able to lay everything out in the right format, um, combine the illustrations and the text, and she designed the cover, which I think looks just beautiful. So once that was set, we sent it over to Signature Printing, and they were able to um, give us a fairly reasonable cost per book so that, you know, the uh, funds for the Verde River will continue to come in as those sell and hopefully, um, you know, do some good work for, for the nonprofit. Nice. Um, so they are in Arizona or they're just in the United States somewhere? They are in, let me check the book really quick. <laughs> <laughs> I might only say printed in the U.S., but they're in another state. And I think I found them from another author friend who'd used them. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Do you yeah, guys so I'm sure we can look it up. Um, yeah, so it's good to know you don't have to go through the you know the big publishers to get these kind of things done. No, there's so many publishers out there that you can work with um, for doing something um, local or personal. Definitely, and and I wouldn't want to give them credit for publishing the book. That was definitely the friends. You know, that took getting a Library of Congress control number, getting an ISBN, all of that. But they did the printing of the book for us. So there are lots of different moving parts with um, getting the books in yeah. the hands of kids. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then so the Friends gets um, royalties from the sale of the book, a certain portion, so it's still, that will still be coming in. Yes. Yeah, so pretty much um, buying the book goes directly to supporting our organization um, because of the grant funding that we were able to have. Mm -hmm. And, and Jim and I donated our text and illustrations because we wanted to help with the Friends. All right. Um, someone did mention, I noticed this too uh, when you were watching the video, it was very cool um, hearing the animals in the background <laughs> out there. You're, you're telling, you're reading the story about them and then they're just saying, yep, we're here, we're here. <laughs> All we needed was an otter to swim by. You know, yeah. That would have been so cool. But we do see otters right there. And one morning we saw, I'd say a dozen uh, great herons flying over the river. You know, it's just such an incredible place. And that that spot where I was is in Camp Verde, where Grace was just talking about um, the need for water conservation. Yeah, that was like the perfect, perfect video for that kind of book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't see any other questions. Anybody have any other questions you want to ask? I've grabbed all the ones that I saw. Um, I don't want anyone to miss out on anything. Do so you have any questions about the book, about Verde River, about um, doing this um, with your friends group or your library or your foundation. Um, I mean, anybody can um, do this kind of thing with any sort of nonprofit. And there's so many resources out there with grants that um, we promote to libraries too. There's so many places to get the funding for this as well, yeah. Uh, while we're waiting, I see there's any, um, because I think we might wrap up in just a few minutes here. We'll wrap up the presentation. I've got my little wrap up to do. Um, any um, final words from all of you, Catherine, Grace, or Phoebe, that you want to share? Well, I just like to. Oh, <laughs> <keep doing that. laughs> I just like to thank everybody for showing up this morning um, and supporting us through watching this webinar. Um, I run the social media and I do the communications. So I have this beautiful uh, spring newsletter sitting next to me. It is available on our website as well. It's right at the top of our homepage. Uh, so anybody who's interested in learning more about Friends of the Verde River, please go check that out. It has a bunch of information about um, what Grace was talking about, our watershed report card. That's our next big initiative. We do have the watershed conference in September and um, follow us on social media. I have a goal to get 
10,000 followers on Facebook by the end of the year and 3,000 on Instagram. So if you follow us, share our content, you really help us out as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Grace, Phoebe, you're all trying to talk before. <laughs> oh, well, I was going to say that um, thank you guys again for um, having us here. Um, like working with the libraries has been such a wonderful experience. I know it's one of the aspects of my job that I always look forward to, to going into the library with Phoebe and having a reading. It's um, always a positive way to start out my mornings working. <laughs> um, and that um, I just, you know, Phoebe is a well-published author. Um, and so she has several other books um, not related to us, but she can, maybe she'd want to take a second to talk about her other works. Oh, you're so sweet, Grace. Thank you. Um, well, I was a children's librarian before doing this, and so my heart will always be in the library. And I may even work my way back in there once my kids are older and I have more time. But um, I have, this is my ninth children's book, and um, they're all available, you know, on my website and other places that books are sold. But I love doing this, and I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to work with the Friends of the Verde River and um, I'm just very grateful that you had us on today, and I really in, have enjoyed some of the shows, and I'll keep watching to get good book recommendations. <laughs> Definitely. We have so many of them. We have our um, Children's and Youth Services librarian, Sally Snyder, does multiple shows throughout the year, um, and even other presentations from, like I said, we bring people in from all over the country um, that, to talk about books, um, and lots of other things library-related, of course, but um, that, I think, yeah, on our show, our, anything to do with children's and teens um, programming is very, very popular. Um, and cataloging. I don't know, catalogers are desperate for content <laughs> or information about how to do their work. Um, those are our two um, big ones, yeah. Well, we're I'm very happy to have you all on. Um, for those, those of you who attended don't know this, um, this was a, one of the pre many presentations that was submitted for the Big Talk from Small Libraries online conference that we host here through the Library Commission. Um, that's always the last Friday in February. Um, but as usual, we get more presentations than can fit into the one day. <laughs> um, we always run out of space and end up have um, not enough room for everyone. We just, it's a single track. There's not multiple tracks, just one day of sessions. Um, but I am lucky that I do have this other show here, this other um, opportunity, uh, Encompass Live, our weekly show. And any of the ones I can't fit in on that day, I do offer and say, hey, we have another way where we can still have you get out there, present, and share what you're doing. And this is one of those presentations. So um, also look on our website for Big Talk from Small Libraries. If you're looking for, um, if you are a small or rural library, um, it is co-sponsored by the Association for Rural and Small Libraries. Um, and if you're looking for, um, we have all the recordings for all of our all of our conferences there going back to 2012 was the first one. Um, but this was one of those that we ran out of room. So let's do it somewhere else. <laughs> Um, but I was glad to help share about this too because you know water conservation and environmental issues are very very important and definitely want to share um, what y'all doing there and have a beautiful book for people to read. Uh, we do have some thank yous coming in. Thank you presenters. Um, a wonderful session. Love the video. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you everybody for being here. Um, I've shared my screen here now and I'm going to just do my little wrap up. Thank you, Catherine, Grace, and Phoebe. This is wonderful. Um, I think we're going to definitely have some people watching that video and checking out your website. Um, here on our Encompass Live page, um, this is the session for today's show. And I do have a link to the Friends of, of the Verde River and um, Phoebe's own um, book website. So you can have quick links right to those. Um, the slides that... Um, Catherine um, showed. Um, I already have those. They will be included when the recording is posted as well. So you'll have access to those slides and that link to the YouTube video. Um, so hopefully to try to scribble all that down, we'll have that all available to you um, with your archive. Um, for everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show, will get an email from me when the recording is ready. Um, usually that's done at the end of the day tomorrow. It takes time for go to webinar and YouTube to Get everything you know processed um, but it, when it's ready um, we will have it on our um, website um, these are our upcoming shows but right underneath here so you can find our archives 
Um, today, she'll be at the top of the list. Most recent one is always at the top here. And you will have a link. I think if I look at this one here, you'll have two links, one to the recording on the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel, and then the slides on our SlideShare account that we use to share um, presentations. So you will have access to those two links as well. Uh, while I'm here on the archives, I will show you, you can search our show archives to see if we've done a show on a topic that you might be interested in or about any li type of library. Um, you can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current. That is because this is our full show archives. I click back over there again. And I'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom because if you notice, this is a very long, long page. <laughs> this is our show archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was January 2009. So we are in our 16th year of the show. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and we have all of our show recordings available here. Um, so if you are watching a recording, do pay attention to the original broadcast date. You'll see everything has a date on it and you'll know when it happened. Um, some of our shows um, will, be sta will stand the test of time, be great things to watch whenever you want to, um, but some things will become old or outdated. Um, resources and services may have changed drastically or not exist anymore. Uh, people will probably work at a different library or a different place than what they did when they presented for us 10 years ago. Um, so just pay attention to that original broadcast date. Um, but we will always keep our show archives with all of them available to you um, out there. Um, that's something libraries do, keep things for historical purposes. And as long as we have a place to host them, which is right now our um, YouTube channel, we always have our show archives available, the full show um, out there. You can see there's a lot of them. Um, our show is officially an hour long, even though some of them run a little longer, some a little shorter, so you can see how long you might be getting into if you decide to watch one of them. Um, we also have a Facebook page. You can see we have a link here. I've got it open over here. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like. We post reminders about the show. Here's a reminder to log into today's show um, about our presenters, when our recordings are available. Um, so you can keep an eye on things here. We also use the hashtag EncompLive on the Nebraska Library Commission's uh, Twitter account and Instagram um, if you follow, um, use any of those. So that's our various social media that we have out there. So that will wrap it up for today's show. Thank you again for everyone being here. Um, you'll see I've got some shows here set up for um, working on getting things finalized for June. So keep an eye on the schedule. But next week is our Pretty Sweet Tech. It is the last Wednesday of the month. So that means it's pretty sweet tech day. Um, every last Wednesday of the month, our technology innovation librarian, Amanda Sweet, comes on and talks about any sweet tech she's come across. And next week, she's gonna be talking about WordPress. Um, we host WordPress sites for libraries here in Nebraska, if they need to have a website. And she's gonna talk about some layouts and things you can do to customize your WordPress. Um, so this would be good for not just people who are in our, you know, that we host, but anybody who uses WordPress. So please do sign up for that one. And Keep an eye on our page here for as I add in um, more shows for June. I am working on it. We do are taking one week off. Um, June 19th is Juneteenth. Happens to be a Wednesday. And as a state agency, um, it is state holiday here in Nebraska. So we're closed that day. So um, no show on Juneteenth. Um, but there will be shows um, every other um, week of June for you to watch. All right, so thank you everybody for being here. Thanks, Catherine, Grace, and Phoebe. It was wonderful to see you and meet you all. Um, good luck with your um, uh, getting those first book um, monies raised. And um, thank you for sharing about the book and the wonderful work that you're doing there in Arizona. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good rest of the week. You too. You too. <laughs>